get this mother humping thing out of the way. Mark Holmes is my daddy. Okay, that's out of the way. Foul! Never gets old. What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great Taco Tuesday, and I hope all your taco dreams come through, come true. Uh, it's afternoon here at the Red Brick House, doing some work uh, outside. The weather about 50 degrees, and it seems like some of the plants are coming alive. And I'm trying to get rid of some of this poison ivy before it starts coming up and becoming a big, you know, big mess. I'm trying to trying to get rid of some of that now and clear it so that way we can, uh, you know, plant grass seed and, and maybe have a garden and things like that because, <laughs> you know, we're trying to get a few chemical-free vegetables here uh, now and then. So we have word that the Cowboys are ready to work on Dak Prescott's contract because basically the way they got this thing set up was the last year of this deal, there are the voidable years that are there, is a cap number that's so big that the Cowboys and Dak would work on getting this thing done. And Dak Prescott bet on himself. The Joneses, you know, had a play on the franchise tag and so on and came down to the wire. The, the thing that you have to realize is this. The Cowboys suck at negotiations. They just do. They have done bad contracts after bad contracts. And I'm going to say, honestly, I'm a Dak Prescott fan. But the contract that they did, they screwed themselves. The fact that you can't tag him on this deal, he can literally walk away. You can't trade him. It's a no-trade clause. And it, it literally gives Dak all the power in the world to him because look at the landscape out there. We know the Joneses don't want to have a down year or two or go into quarterback purgatory like some teams have been in. You know, you think about how Denver has been in quarterback purgatory since Peyton Manning and even before Peyton Manning. You think about how New Orleans is since Drew Brees has left, how Washington has been for 30-plus years, their quarterback situation, uh, or even the Jets. The Jets have tried, you know, from drafting Mark Sanchez's and um, Zach Wilson's. and I mean, uh, yeah, Zach Wilson's and Sam Darnold's and things. And, you know, they even go out and get, of course, Aaron Rodgers, and he, you know, tears his Achilles the first week. These are things that are legitimate. Now, what's going to make people pissed off is, well, I'll, I'll just play this report because this will literally piss off a lot of fans right now. So let's listen in to Schultz report. Switching, switching to another quarterback, you have Dak Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys. Now, this to me is probably one of the more intriguing quarterback um, scenarios to hit, to hit the offseason for so many reasons. One, Dak Prescott really had the best season of his career. But you also have Dallas, who still has to pay CeeDee Lamb. They still have to pay Micah Parsons. And obviously, they're going to have to pay Dak Prescott. Now, I've been on the record. I believe Dak Prescott is going to command somewhere along the lines of $60 million per year, potentially making him the highest-paid quarterback in football and resetting his quarterback market. He played that well, and really for most of the season, especially that back half of the year, Dak Prescott was the MVP favorite or in that conversation and obviously finished inside the top five. So he really was there throughout. Okay, And then you also have the fact that, again, if you're the Dallas Cowboys, you push C.D. Lamb down this year, so you really have to pay him. You could wait to pay Micah Parsons because he's now extension eligible for the first time. This was his third season. Um, so there's a lot of moving parts. But I believe, considering how well Dak played for Dallas this year, considering the alternatives and the fact that Jerry Jones – really wants to win now, doesn't want to have to start over at quarterback, mm -hmm. and has a tremendous amount of respect for Dak Prescott. I believe that Dak Prescott is going to reset the quarterback market and get in the vicinity of $60 million 
this offseason. He certainly put himself in that position. He had a fantastic year. But again, you're also talking about CeeDee Lamb, who's going to be one of the highest paid wide receivers. And then do they pay Micah Parsons now or do they push him a year down the road, considering that this is only the first year that he is extension eligible? Okay, so here's the thing on this. Now, the Cowboys will end up having, just like everybody else, um, I, I think I had a video up earlier today about this, the salary cap they were looking at going from 224 to 242. Um, but now new estimates have it somewhere in the 50s. So if we take that $250 million number, if we, if we use math here, because this is where um, I find it interesting when they say reset the quarterback market. You really aren't resetting the quarterback market. Let's say hypothetically it is sixty million. Right now, Joe Burrow is the highest paid at fifty-five. Right? Okay. If we look at what's happened with the salary cap, and maybe most of us can understand inflation. You know, where a dozen of eggs there for a while used to be about a buck fifty, and then at some points they went to about ten dollars. Okay, you understand that the price goes up. Now, here's the thing. The NFL's market amount of money from going from 224 to now 250 is actually a 12% increase. Okay? 12%. There's 12% more money now than there was last year. So if we take Joe Burrow's deal at $55 million a year, and multiply that by, of course, the 12%, you come up with $61.6 million in today's money. See, this is the thing I want you to understand. What you're saying is last year's money, there was less money to go around. And so you really are looking at the percentages because no matter how much money it is, you still have to pay your top 50 players out of that salary cap. If there's more money then you're taking a smaller percentage or you're still taking the same percentage. I hope this is, I, I know most of you guys don't understand math anymore because they don't really teach it in school anymore. But what I'm saying is, is this, because the salary cap is going to go up by $28 million, 55, excuse me, $61.6 .6 million is the new 55 million. Now be that as it may, I know people are still going to say, he's not worth that money, let him walk. Well, you could do that. But the problem is, is again, going back to the contract that Jerry Jones signed, which they came up with the parameters of it, literally screwed the pooch on it, where Dak Prescott has all the leverage. You can not sign me, and, and we have $59 million um, in caps, you know, my cap number, in which case, it's going to preclude you from being able to try and pick people up to get better. You can cut me and divide that $59 million up over you know this year and next year, which still kind of precludes you from doing anything. Or you can sign me to a new contract. And this is where the Cowboys realize, hat in hand, you, you got us by the, the, the cojones here. And they can work out a deal. And mind you, I want you to understand... When he says it's a $60 million deal, okay, $60 million deal, that doesn't mean that you're getting a $60 million cap hit every year. When you look at these contracts, and even Dak's contract, even though his contract averaged $40 million a year, it was 17 19 and 26 Never got anywhere close to $40 million a year because of the signing bonus, the guaranteed money, and things like that that you can use to offset what the cost is every year. And they will do the same thing. And I'm betting that they get this contract number for the first year somewhere between 20 and $25 million, in which case it gives you a lot of cap relief. And it's not quite as painful as you think when you understand that the salary cap is going up. His percentages won't be any worse than what Joe Burrows. Maybe it's even less. Now, one other point here, as we are killing Dak Prescott with his money, the Cowboys actually have an advantage because unlike, let's say, the Cleveland Browns, whose 
Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson, who's been a complete disappointment. His cap number is $63 million. Um, do you want to sign him to a new contract? I don't think so. And his contract is fully guaranteed. In which case, you're going to have to pay him all of that money. So, whose situation would you rather have? The Cowboys with Dak Prescott? Or the Cleveland Browns with Deshaun Watson? Oh, and by, mind you, one other thing here too. As we're talking about Dak Prescott's cap number, you know Peyton, no, excuse me, not Peyton, excuse me, um, Pat Mahomes, his cap number is $58 million, But nobody's talking about Deshaun Watson or Mahomes' contract. Yeah. All right, good people. Um, I did have some other stuff in here, but this is just kind of throwing too much at you. And I don't want you guys to get, like, too loopy with information. But um, bringing up the Deshaun Watson situation where you look at these guys that have gotten the next contract that's been the huge one. They haven't gone for the second mega one. And you look at the guys from Kyler Murray, Carson Wentz, Deshaun Watson, even Josh Allen. All of their numbers went downhill after that first contract. With the exception of Dak Prescott's. So, there you have it. He's played well. He's played actually really well. I know not in the playoffs, but... Ain't nobody played well in the playoffs for the Cowboys. All right, good people. I will catch you later. Peace.